Clean Vocal Chain Overview. For this chain, I want to focus on creating an incredibly detailed, present, and forward vocal, but retain the natural sound of the performance and minimize the impact of unwanted artifacts. Now we'll start with phase alignment, subtractive EQ, compression, disharmonious frequency attenuation, and de-essing on our main channel. Then on our buses or sends, we'll perform a really unique form of saturation that results in a super controlled and clean sound, as well as amplifying mid frequencies without adding noise or distortion. Lastly, we're going to route the vocal and sends to a collective bus, on which we're going to mimic how our ears compress low frequencies, add natural room reflections, clarify the vocal with high frequency delay, and then shape the overall sound with additive EQ. Now this chain is somewhat complex, and it may seem like overkill to some, but it really does result in a super clean sound. Additionally, I'm going to explain everything in detail as we go, and offer some free plugin alternatives, so stick around to get the best understanding of why this chain works. Let's take a listen to a full AB with peak normalized tracks to hear how the chain affects the vocal. And I don't need to remind you. And I don't need to remind you. Phase alignment first. Now I've detailed this step for mastering, but I think it's even more important when we're processing vocals since the issue is more likely to occur. In short, a recording can have a DC offset caused by the mic or the preamp. Now this means that the recording could be shifted to the positive or negative phase or side. Now ideally, the peaks and troughs of a waveform should be in equal proportion and centered along an X axis or voltage unity. If a recording is shifted, any processing that I use is going to misread the peaks. This is especially important with processors that include thresholds like compressors, saturators, and more. That said, it's a good idea to fix this before processing. With this Isotope RX standalone plugin, I'll import my vocal recording, open the phase module, then hit suggest. It's going to show me if the vocals have an offset by how much, and it's automatically going to fix the issue. Now note that nothing is deleted from the vocal, and it has no effect on the sound, only how accurately my processors are going to measure it. Unfortunately, I don't know of a free alternative to the software, so if you do, please let me and others know about it in the comments. Corrective Subtractive EQ before we begin to introduce additive processing, let's remove frequencies from the vocal that are disharmonious or are present in excess. Attenuating these problem frequencies are going to make the vocal sound more balanced and musical. I'll use this FabFilter Pro Q3, but a good free alternative is M Equalizer by Melda Audio. It only offers six bands, but it's very useful nonetheless. Now I'll start with a high pass filter to remove resonances picked up from the mic and the mic stand. Then I'll usually dip a little of 250 hertz. Now, although there are rarely hard set rules in audio, 250 hertz almost always covers up or masks two to five kilohertz, which is where a lot of the vocal's clarity is. Next, I wanna figure out the key of the vocal and the song. If I don't know this, I could use TuneBats Analyzer, which is gonna tell me the key, an alternative key, and the BPM, which will be helpful later on. Now to keep things simple, let's say the song's key is in C major. What I'll do is look and I'll listen for frequencies in the mids that don't fit in this key. So potentially D sharp, F sharp, or another note that isn't in key but has a high amplitude in the recording. I'll center a band on the frequency, use a slightly more narrow Q value, and then attenuate by a couple of dB. Lastly, I like to attenuate a little of the vocal sibilance or the S sounds in the highest frequency range. You could just use your ears, but the easiest way is to observe the frequency analyzer and find where the energy is concentrated whenever a sibilant occurs. Then I'll attenuate it by 1 to 2 dB with a bandwidth that matches that of the sibilant range. Let's take a listen to our vocal process with this subtractive EQ and notice how it sounds slightly more balanced. And I don't need to remind you. And I don't need to remind you. Clean vocal compression. Next, let's use compression to control the vocal's dynamics, but just as importantly, bring the vocal forward with post compression amplification. We'll want to use quick settings to quickly capture the transient. One issue, though, is that fast attack times can cut into a transient, causing distortion. To work around this, let's use two milliseconds of look ahead, which will measure the transient before it occurs, allowing the compressor to attenuate the full transient without causing distortion. Then we're gonna set a 40 to 50 millisecond release time to quickly return the vocal to unity, but avoid the same type of distortion that would have occurred with a super quick attack. A four to one ratio with a softer knee works well, but be sure to use your ears and try to avoid more than 6 dB of attenuation. Lastly, I'll use automatic makeup gain to amplify the vocal post compression. By reducing the peaks and then amplifying, we bring up quieter details of the vocal that would have otherwise been masked by louder signals. Let's take a listen and notice how the vocal sounds more controlled and how the increased details from post compression amplification make the vocalist sound closer to the listener. 
And I don't need to remind you. And I don't need to remind you. Clean vocal compression with free alternative. Last chapter, we used the FabFilter Pro C2 for our compression, but a great free alternative is M Compressor by Melda Audio. Using it will look a little different than last chapter, so let's cover how to use it quickly in case you want to follow along but you don't have the Pro C2. With it, I'll set a 1.5 millisecond RMS setting, which will average the input amplitude, causing less erratic compression. Then, I'll set a 20 millisecond attack time and a 20 millisecond release. Since we don't have look ahead with this plugin, we'll have to avoid super short attack times due to distortion. I'll select the soft knee setting and increase the value of the knee size and use a 4 to 1 ratio, again, trying to attenuate by no more than 6 dB. Lastly, in the output section, we can enable automatic gain compensation, which is going to adjust the output similar to the automatic makeup gain setting from the last chapter. Let's take a listen and compare this compressor with the one that we used in the last chapter to see if they create a similar sound. And I don't need to remind you. And I don't need to remind you. Disharmonious transient the emphasis. In chapter 3, we discussed the idea of disharmonious frequencies or ones that exist outside the key of our track. Although we don't want to get rid of these completely, it helps to attenuate them whenever they get too loud. I'll use this multiband transient expander called Punctuate by Newfangled Audio and select 10 bands as the setting. Then I'm going to go over to the frequency aspect and instead of using the preset mal frequencies, alter these frequencies that are outside the song's key. You're probably going to need to look these frequencies up first, depending on the key of your vocal that you're working on, but I'll set mine according to this particular vocal. Now once the frequencies are set, I'll use a suppress setting to attenuate them by about 1 to 2 dB whenever they trigger the plugin. Additionally, I'll set the measurement to a multiband setting to allow each band to work independently. This way, whenever a particular out-of-key frequency is strong enough, the processor is going to attenuate it. If you're having some trouble getting this to sound natural, you could just use the mix dial and blend in the effect until the vocals sound more musical, but the processing itself isn't too noticeable. Now, unfortunately, I don't know of a free multiband frequency-specific transient suppressor, but if you do, let me and others know about it in the comment section. Let's take a listen to the processor and notice how the vocal sounds more musical by dynamically reducing disharmonious signals. And I don't need to remind you. And I don't need to remind you. High frequency, vocal compression. Although we attenuated some of the sibilants in chapter 3, I want to do it dynamically with a high frequency compressor, more commonly called a de-esser. Now the idea is to center the band over the frequency range like we did in chapter 3, and then set the threshold carefully so that only the sibilance is attenuated. If you have access to one with an attack and release, set a quick attack and a quick release to return the signal to unity quickly. Since we're working with higher frequencies, we don't need to worry as much about these quick settings causing some distortion. I usually attenuate by 3 dB at most, but you might need to attenuate less or more, depending on the vocalist, the EQ of the microphone used, and some more factors. Lastly, I'll adjust the makeup gain to amplify as much as I attenuated. This is going to reduce the harshness of the discordant sibilants and amplify some more of the musical sounding highs. I like to use this Weiss DSer, but a good free alternative is TDSer by Techovation, or an even better sounding, really affordable option is Sibilance 4 by Tone Boosters. Let's take a listen to the DSer being introduced and notice how the highs become a lot cleaner. And I don't need to remind you. And I don't need to remind you. Cleanest possible vocal saturation. For the past seven chapters, we've been inserting our processing on the main vocal track, but let's start introducing parallel processing on auxiliary tracks. The method I'm about to describe is a little complex, but it results in very controlled saturation. To explain, let me quickly detail what a saturator does. In short, it introduces harmonics. Harmonics are multiples of a fundamental frequency, so if the fundamental is 80 Hz, a second ordered harmonic is 160 Hz, while a third order harmonic is 240 Hz, and so on. Now that said, our ears perceive these multiple frequencies as one note, since they're related to one another. Intermodulation distortion, on the other hand, is somewhat similar in that specific frequencies are being amplified, however, unlike harmonics, these frequencies are not related to the fundamental. For example, if distortion occurs to 80 Hz and it results in the amplification of 200 Hz, this would be intermodulation distortion. 
The reason I bring this up is because saturators can cause intermodulation distortion if they misread the fundamental frequency. If a saturator reads the fundamental as 100 Hz, but the fundamental is actually 80 Hz, then it could result in the amplification of 200 Hz, which, as we just covered, is disharmonious to the actual fundamental frequency in this example. So, to completely avoid this issue, here's an option I'd like to try out. First, send the vocal to an auxiliary track on which we've inserted a linear phase EQ. Next, use this linear phase EQ to isolate the fundamental frequency of the vocal. Now, keep in mind that this probably won't be just one note, since the vocal is going to sing various notes, but it's often within a observable range of frequencies. With a high slope high pass and a high slope low pass, isolate the range of fundamental vocal frequencies. Then, insert your saturator plugin and dial in the effect. Now, if we observe the output of the saturator using an analyzer, we'll notice that the harmonics are all uniform and that we don't have intermodulation distortion. But once I start increasing the frequency range that's being affected, the output of the saturator is showing both harmonic and intermodulation distortion. Once I have the harmonics that I want, I'll use the Oxtrax channel fader to blend the effect in with the original vocal. Now, one more thing I like about this setup is that I could use the second EQ after the saturator to amplify various frequency ranges. So say I want more harmonics around 2 kHz, I could create a bell and amplify that range. Additionally, if I want to exclude the fundamental, I could use a high pass, resulting in this channel having only the harmonics or the overtones. Now keep in mind, intermodulation distortion may not always sound bad or even be perceivable, so you'll have to use your ears. But let's take a listen to how this controlled saturation sounds and see if it makes the vocal slightly fuller, yet retains its clean nature. And I don't need to remind you. And I don't need to remind you. Free alternative, clean saturation. In the last chapter, I used the clean tube setting of FabFilter Saturn 2 to saturate the signal, but if you don't have this processor, a good free alternative is GSAT Plus by TB Pro Audio. Additionally, if you don't have a linear phase EQ, Logic Pro offers one as a stock plugin, and for anyone not using Logic Pro, LKJB has a free plugin called QRange, which is a good option. Let's use these free plugins with the same setup and notice how the sound is similar. And I don't need to remind you. And I don't need to remind you. Mid frequency gate and upward compress. For this next step, I'm going to bring up quieter aspects of the mid frequencies, but in a way that doesn't increase the noise floor. First, let's again set up a send from our channel track, and on the corresponding auxiliary track, insert a linear phase EQ. With it, I'll isolate the mid-frequencies, usually between 4 to 500 hertz and 5 kilohertz. Like the last chapter, I'll use low and high pass filters to isolate the range, but this time, use more gradual slopes, usually 18 to 24 dB per octave, should work well. Then, I'll insert a gate, which will attenuate the vocal whenever it falls below a specific amplitude, as determined by the threshold. I'll set the threshold around negative 50 dB, and use a softer knee with a little look ahead. I'll use this fat filter gate, but if you don't have it, you could use the M compressor by Melda Audio. If you set a 1 to 1 ratio and select custom shape, you could determine when the amplitude of the signal is going to be attenuated. In this instance, we'll want to drop the amplitude whenever the signal falls below 50 dB. Last up, let's insert the upward compressor MV2, and increase the low-level signal. This will measure and compress quieter parts of the signal, then introduce makeup gain to amplify the details of the mid-frequency range. Now, since we inserted a gate before this, the noise floor won't be amplified by the MV2. Now, although the MV2 is an affordable option, a good free alternative is OTT by X for Records. Once we've dialed in the amount of compression and made any needed adjustments to the EQ or the gate, we can determine how much of this effect that we want by adjusting the Oxtrax channel fader. Let's take a listen to the effect being blended in and notice how the mids sound much more present and detailed. And I don't need to remind you. And I don't need to remind you. Natural, below 1000 Hz, attenuation on the bus. At this point, we're done creating auxiliary tracks, but what we want to do now is route both the original channel and our auxiliary tracks to a collective bus where we can process them all together. Now to do this, I'll change the output of the channel and the aux channels to the same bus. For the rest of the video, we'll be adding our processing to this bus. Now first, let's insert a multiband compressor. With it, I'll create incredibly natural sounding compression to add a final stage of dynamic control to the vocal. Let me quickly explain the thinking behind this step though. In short, two muscles in our ears naturally protect our eardrums from loud sounds. Now to do this, the muscles contract and narrow the passageway to the eardrum, resulting in attenuation from 1 dB to 20 dB depending on the intensity of the sound. 
The contraction of the two muscles isn't instant, though. It takes between 35 to 40 milliseconds for it to happen, and these muscles stay contracted for about 130 to 150 milliseconds. Additionally, this contraction mainly attenuates frequencies below 1000 Hz. Now with all of this in mind, let's use a multiband compressor and isolate our attenuation to 1000 Hz and below. Then we'll set an attack of 40 milliseconds and a release of 150 milliseconds, and if possible, set a softer need to mimic the gradual attenuation caused by the tensing of the muscles. I'll only introduce a couple of dB of attenuation to keep the effect from being too obvious. Be sure things like look ahead, make up gain, and any other unrelated function is turned off. I'll use this isotope compressor, but a good free alternative is TDR Nova by Tokyo Don Labs. Let's take a listen and let me know in the comments if the compression sounds natural and if this is something that you plan on trying. And I don't need to remind you. And I don't need to remind you. Natural Studio Room Reflections At this point in the chain, our frequency is balanced, our dynamics are controlled, and the overall sound of the vocal is full and present. So let's add some reflections to give the vocal some depth and to help it fit into a mix. I'll use this 7th Heaven Reverb, but a good free alternative is this D Reverb by Stone Voices. Now with it, I'll find a room emulation. A studio setting is going to work well. I'll blend in the effect with the mix dial and ensure that I have a pre-delay of at least 10 milliseconds to let some of the dry vocal cut through. If you're using the free alternative, try a decay time of around a second, again using a longer pre-delay and ensure that the width isn't too aggressive. Now this step is really simple, but these natural sounding reflections really help a vocal sound like it was cleanly recorded in an actual space instead of maybe a bedroom studio. Let's take a listen to it. And I don't need to remind you. And I don't need to remind you. High vocal range delay. To help the vocal stick out and to give it a unique characteristic, I'm going to introduce this delay, but to the frequencies that provide the most vocal clarity. I'll use this FabFilter Timeless plugin, but most stock delay plugins are going to be fine. With it, I'll use an eighth note delay on one channel and a dotted eighth note delay on the other, then isolate the reflections to the clarifying ranges of the vocal. Now be sure not to include the delay to sibilance areas. For one, it's going to amplify unwanted sibilance, and two, since the sibilance has a quick attack and decay, the transients will be really apparent, making the effect too noticeable. Now like last chapter, this is a super simple step, but the settings are a great starting point for vocal delay. Let's take a listen to it. And I don't need to remind you. And I don't need to remind you. Additive EQ to important ranges. This is going to be the last step in our clean vocal chain. With an EQ, we'll boost any and all frequencies that we want more of, creating a final shape for the vocal. Additionally, if I find a range that was amplified too much, I can dip some of it. Now what's great about adding this EQ at the end of our chain is that it shapes all of the processing that comes before it, including the saturation, the delay, and so on. Now for this vocal, I'll boost a little of the fundamental, dip a little of 250 hertz to add some clarity to the highs, maybe amplify a little of 500 hertz to increase vowel pronunciation, and then amplify some of the vocals clarifying 2.5 to 5 kilohertz range. What you do is completely up to you, and you should by no means feel like these are the only frequencies you can affect, but I find that they're a great starting point. Let's take a listen to the vocal with this final shaping, and note that I'll probably change some of these bands slightly to best suit this particular vocal. And I don't need to remind you. And I don't need to remind you. Thanks for watching, and be sure to check out the link in the description for a free mastered sample of your mix.